All right, so we talk a lot about hard assets here at Follow the Money. Uh, it's not that it's the only asset class that we own or that we talk about, but it is an extremely important asset class for providing diversification in this you know, current paper economy, this fiat currency system that we have are rooted in modern monetary mechanics, specifically things like fractional reserve banking, right? So we are faced with this over leverage in paper assets and therefore things that are real, things that are tangible, things that you can touch and feel, these are things called hard assets. And certainly our pace investing philosophy uh, is you know, pretty much all about hard assets. P, precious metals, A, agriculture, C, commodities, and E, standing for energy. So Obviously, these have been going up in 2022, something fierce, right? Even somewhat alarming uh, because we have seen such quick acceleration in so many different prices. Now, ultimately, what's to blame for this is you know, at the very foot of the situation, you can really put the Federal Reserve, which has been printing lots and lots and lots of money to get us out of the pickle that we found ourselves in during the COVID-19 uh, crisis back in the early part of 2020, where the Fed began printing money, you know, buying up corporate bonds, government bonds, and all kinds of monetary easing with, you know, interest rates near zero. And where we are today, of course, is a couple of years later, we're living and eating the fruit of those decisions, aren't we? Where the Fed printed a lot of money, it created all manner of distortions and disarticulations in the financial markets. And then we, of course, had all manner of supply chain constraints as well. That did not help matters. And then on top of all of that, as we head into 2022, we have a war in Eastern Europe, right? So war is always bad. The loss of human life is just simply terrible. What we're seeing happening is heartbreaking. And then you also have not just the human costs of war, but then you, of course, have the uh, material costs of war. And when you look at Russia and Ukraine, for example, you'll find out that those two countries are some of the biggest producers of agriculture and food in the whole world. In fact, according to the Department of Agriculture right here in the United States, uh, Russia was the world's leading exporter of wheat last year. They exported around 39 million metric tons of wheat. So you have, you know, the breadbasket of the world in some ways uh, really kind of being bombed and war and all kinds of sanctions around this area. So you're dealing with, you know, runaway prices. The price of corn and soybeans are trading at their highest levels since 2012. Also, there's a tremendous amount of fertilizers, key ingredients in fertilizers, which enable, you know, plants and crops to grow and get big. Well, Russia produces a tremendous amount of those nutrients. And that, of course, is a big, big snare uh, for the global food production uh, situation right now. And you also have not just world food prices hitting the record high in February, according to the UN, you also have, as we mentioned, uh, metals prices, right? Gold and silver really beginning to take off. Palladium, which 40% of the world's palladium, more than 40%, is produced in Russia. And so there's, we've been seeing a big increase in uh, palladium this year. Also, you're, you know, you're seeing silver break out above its 200-day moving average just recently. That's really encouraging for silver investors, but of course, it's coming at a terrible time uh, for the world. Gold crossing above $2,000 uh, for the first time since 2020, uh, about August of 2020 is when we, we hit that price last time. So gold also uh, really working in this environment. Then you have, of course, energy prices which are just through the roof, right? So the U.S. national average price of gasoline uh, just hit a record price this week. Uh, the previous record was set back in 2008. Now the average price of gasoline here in the United States is well above $4, about $4.10 or even close to $0.20 cents now uh, as you know, gas prices just uh, are hitting Americans very hard and the globe for that matter, right? So it doesn't matter if you're in the U.S. or in Europe you're seeing, you know, a big inflation. And inflation, by the way, as we always say, is is uh, a result. You know, price inflation is is an effect of a cause that is monetary inflation. So you cannot print lots and lots of U.S. dollars and then expect them not to be a devalued and b not to to cause the price of things to go up. Right? That's exactly where we are. We are in a situation 
where the Fed has been printing lots of money and it has created all of this dilution in the in the dollar. And therefore, we have this, plus we have supply constraints, uh, chain constraints, and then we also have war on top of that, affecting a very important area of the world when it comes to commodities, especially agricultural commodities. So, I mean, it's just a perfect storm here for PACE, for PACE investments to go higher. And that's exactly what we've been seeing uh, you know, this year. Now, I want to shift gears here for a minute and talk about how to invest in these spaces because clearly they're, they're all going up. And I wouldn't say that if you don't have any exposure to these areas right now in your investment portfolio, you should have some. I, I currently have 15% of my total investable assets or investable dollars going into hard assets specifically like commodities, uh, precious metals, and things of that nature. Uh, and so if you don't have any exposure to commodities per se, you may not want to run out and get your full allocation right this second. I mean, since we've seen such a uh, soaring, soaring prices here across the board. However, what I would say is that you really do want to have exposure to commodities, especially in this paper economy that we're in, right? This fiat currency system that we're in, it's driving prices of commodities higher. So having exposure is important. Now, uh, what I want to do is just go through each one of these briefly and talk about how you can get exposure. So let's talk about P first, PACE. So the P stands for precious metals, things like gold, silver, palladium, and platinum. So far this year in 2022, we have gold up almost 10%, silver up about 13%, platinum up about 15%, and palladium, which is the one that's been most affected by the current uh, war in Eastern Europe, uh, as Russia is the leading producer of palladium. Palladium is up nearly 60%, right? This is just since the beginning of this year. So some really big, big moves, uh, but especially in palladium. Now, we like precious metals because we have seen throughout history that precious metals are a direct beneficiary of poor monetary policies. Now, there's several ways that you can invest across the board in precious metals. One way is just to straight up buy physical bullion. This is the most direct form of ownership. And in my opinion, the best way to own precious metals is to actually own the metal itself. So gold or silver, palladium, platinum, you can buy these in coin form, bar form, uh, directly from a dealer. Now, we here at Follow the Money, have long used Tom Cloud for physical bullion. And he provides great prices, and we just you know call him anytime we want to add, just like many of our members do. If you ever want to contact Tom, you can always reach out to him and just tell him you heard about him on Follow the Money, and he will give you the same deal he gives to us. It's a really good deal. Now, that uh, physical bullion is one way to get exposure to precious metals. Another way is through numismatic coins. Now, these are coins that are considered to be rare or collectible. This is more of a area that I would typically avoid unless you're just absolutely specialized in that space, right? Unless you're just really a coin collector or things like that. But not really thinking about coin collecting here. We're thinking about really protecting from inflation and physical bullion does that. But you can also invest in shares of mining operations. You know, investing in gold and silver mining companies can be risky, but I believe that, you know, if you do your research, you can find some really good companies. Now, one of the easiest ways to get exposure to just a basket of mining shares would be to use like the Market Vectors Gold Miners ETF, ticker symbol GDX. And that gives you just a, access to a big basket of gold miners uh, without having to choose which miner to buy, right? Very, very important that if you're going to choose a specific gold miner that you do your research, that you don't just, you know, jump in. Uh, to whatever you see online. You, so this is why ETFs can be much more powerful for the average investor who wants exposure to the asset, but he doesn't want to have to choose which one is going to go up. You can really be wrong. Many investors get burned because they try to pick stocks instead of just investing broadly across the uh, the space. So unless you know what you're doing, unless you're willing to research and put hours of time into it, typically the ETF can give you just broad exposure to that particular theme that you're looking for. Uh, you know, obviously there are mining exchange traded funds. As I mentioned, there's GDX. There's also GDXJ, which is the uh, uh, junior gold miners ETF. That one also can be helpful. Then there's also the Global X Silver Miners ETF, ticker symbol SIL. And then the junior version of that is SILJ. These are companies that are in the silver mining space. And so these can really be interesting as well. You can also get exposure to palladium through uh, an ETF. Uh, but again, we would usually prefer to have physical 
metal in our possession as opposed to tr you know buying uh, metals with an ETF only for you know only for trading. Same thing goes for options and futures. You know you could do some options trading uh, in the space as well. But really, holding a portion of your wealth in physical uh, assets, hard assets like gold, like silver, I believe is a smart idea. So that is the P in PACE. Now let's move on to A. A refers to agriculture. And if you've been paying attention, as we mentioned, to what's been happening in the, the price of many agricultural commodities, it is just simply uh, astonishing. It really, really is. So when we take a look at, for example, the performance of many different agricultural commodities, well, we see many things. We see wheat is up nearly, you know, 55, 56%. We see soybeans are up 27% this year. Corn is up 25%. Soy soybean meal is up 21%. Canola oil is up 10%. Even rice is up like 7%. You know, this year, you have lean hogs that are up 24%. That's driving the price of meat higher, of course. And, you know, even things like, um, you know, uh, cotton are up and cocoa are up. So, you know, we're dealing with really broad, uh, you know, inflation at the agricultural level. Now, there's ways to invest in agriculture. Uh, obviously, you can invest directly in farmland. And that's a really, you know, that's obviously a very good way to invest in agriculture. But you can also invest in agricultural uh, companies. There's many, you know, leading uh, agricultural companies that are very well positioned, not just companies that produce the food, but companies that help produce the food. Uh, maybe even, you know, companies like John Deere or Caterpillar. Uh, there's also, you know, companies that are in the fertilizer space like CF Industries. You know, these are some of the uh, different companies that are out there in that space. Now, you want to do a deep dive and see which one's right for you. But then you can also get exposure to a broad basket of agricultural uh, stocks by using the Invesco Agricultural ETF. That ticker is DBA. Uh, that, that particular ETF has done really, really well this year. And currently, it's ranked in our top 10 on our ETF leaders. So we have an ETF leaderboard here at Follow the Money. And all of our members are able to see, all of our gold and platinum members are able to see uh, that leaderboard updated every week. And all year long, we have just had these commodity, energy, metals, agriculture uh, types of ETFs at the top of the leaderboard, right? So keeping our members on the right side of the trend. Right now, uh, you know, uh, the corn ETF is in the top 10. Uh, the crude oil ETF is in the top 10. The agricultural ETF DBA is in the top 10. Uh, palladium is in the top 10. Soybeans are in the top 10. I mean, so it, you know, it's incredible how our ETF leaderboard is keeping our members on the right side of the trade so they know exactly what's, what's hot right now. Now, you can, as I mentioned, you can use exchange-traded funds to invest in agriculture. You can invest in specific companies. You can even buy farmland you know, outright. Uh, and there's even ways to do that online with crowdfunding. So that's also a very popular thing. Now, I just covered quite a bit of the agricultural commodities and some of the regular commodities as well. There is another ETF that you can look at that focuses on uh, commodities per se, and that is uh, the Invesco Commodities ETF, which is actually the number one trend-ranked uh, ETF right now on our ETF leaderboard. And that ticker is DBC. So that one is one that gives you exposure to, you know, I want to say around 14 of the most heavily traded and important physical commodities in the world. And so that's a easy way just to get exposure to, you know, a big basket of commodities. Now, remember, they're not always just going to go straight up, right? And you don't want to chase these types of markets, but instead you just want to know about them and have a plan, right? So let's continue on. We've talked about uh, precious metals and agriculture and commodities largely. Let's talk about the final one, E. So E, of course, stands for energy. And energy has been one of the biggest, biggest winners uh, so far this year. Heating oil, for example, anyone relying upon heating oil, up 64% in 2022 alone, right? Gasoline prices up 57% year to date. Crude oil here in the United States, West Texas Intermediate crude oil, up about 56%. Uh, Brent crude oil up about 55% uh, year to date. Natural gas up 21% since the beginning of this year, right? Ethanol or ethanol up about 55%. 
I mean, it is absolutely outrageous to see the energy prices that we have seen. And especially when you consider that oil prices actually went negative in 2020. I don't know if anybody remembers this, but oil prices actually went negative temporarily in the big March 2020 crash, right? So it's been a wild run for energy and energy investors and energy traders for the last uh, two years. You know, the discovery of oil changed the world. There's few other substances that carry so much energy per unit volume or per unit weight as oil. And today, the entire global infrastructure has become completely dependent upon growing sources of cheap oil, right? That's the problem. The problem is, is that oil is not renewable. And so therefore, you know, there have been many other types of areas of energy. So there's clean energy, which is also benefiting here as gas prices and specifically as the bar each barrel of oil is now over $120 per barrel, at least for Brent crude, you know, this is driving people to look for alternatives, right? So they're looking for solar, they're looking for wind, they're looking for nuclear, they're looking for other types of, uh, you know, you know, other types of energy sources that can be cheaper uh, than oil. But, you know, as, as it stands now, we are still pretty much held hostage uh, to oil producers and oil production. And that means that, you know, you can't really ignore the space. It's an area that you just, you know, need to be aware of. Now, you can invest, of course, in individual energy companies. And that's probably one of the very best ways to do it. You know, you can invest in oil companies, one of my favorites personally is Chevron. Chevron's a dividend aristocrat. It's been around for a long time. They could easily move into the renewable space and are making commitments in that in that way. But there's many other companies as well. Uh, and then, of course, there's exchange traded funds, right? So you can invest in oil right through an exchange traded fund, something like uh, BNO, which gives you exposure, uh, you know, to the uh, Brent crude oil, uh, or you could invest in something like DBO, which gives you exposure to U.S. Uh, crude oil, you know, or you could invest in something like, uh, you know, an ETF that focuses upon, you know, energy companies like the entire energy sector, like XLE, that's one particular ETF. So there's lots of ways to get exposure uh, to energy through ETFs. There's also master limited partnerships like MLPs. These pay these are publicly traded stocks, but they actually pay a very high dividend and they pass on their, you know, a lot of their profits to shareholders so that they can get special tax treatment. So there's, you know, quite a few uh, MLPs that you can look at, you know, as well. In addition, I also like, you know, alternative energy. I actually prefer uh, the rise of renewable energy over, you know, crude oil per se. So I'm more excited about investing in renewable energy than I am in energy, but you just can't you just can't, you know, uh, deny that right now energy or oil, uh, specifically in natural gas, are just driving prices higher, and you don't really want to say that it's not going to continue in the near term. So, but overall, there's plenty of ways to invest in energy. So through the market, you, know, you can also straight up buy an oil well. That's very difficult to do, you know, anymore. But you know, or you could uh, do crowdsourcing types of things along with energy. There's lots of different ways to get exposure. Now, the main thing that I wanted to share with you in this first segment is that when it comes to inflation, like we see today, pace is a way to give yourself a chance to keep up with inflation, right? Not just stocks, not just real estate, not just your own business, not just other things, but also these investments that are rooted in hard assets, right? Uh, and so I encourage you to remember that simple acronym, P-A-C-E, historical data demonstrates that these four areas, precious metals, agriculture, commodities, and energy, also known as hard assets, they have performed extremely well during previous times of inflation. And these hard assets are tangible investments that you can physically touch, you can handle. And we've been focused on these areas for many, many years. If you want to learn more about the PACE investing philosophy, you can pick up a copy of our book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation, where I have a whole chapter devoted to understanding this particular type of investing style. But then also, we've talked in this book all about inflation, why it's coming, modern money mechanics, so much in this book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation, that will help you understand where we are right now and where things are very likely heading. So I want to encourage you to check out that uh, that book. And if you want to learn more about us here at Follow the Money, just simply go to our website, followthemoney.com. Go to our five levels of financial freedom, followthemoney.com forward slash five levels. And we will provide you a free uh, guide right there 
where you can actually learn how to achieve financial freedom. And it incorporates investing, you know, in things that go up whenever inflation go, goes up, right? So we have all of that information for you right there. Plus, of course, our free podcast. You can go back and listen to several of our previous podcasts we've done. We just recently did one entitled Hard Asset Investing 101. That was episode uh, number 398. I would strongly encourage you to check out that uh, that episode if you haven't heard it yet. That'll be really helpful for you uh, when it comes to this particular space. We also did a episode back in uh, episode 390 back in May of last year called Gold is Set to Shine. And we also did an episode back in May of last year, also uh, episode number 389 called Inflation is Here. So we've been trying to set you up here to see what is coming. Uh, We also did an episode that will be really helpful for you back in December of 2020 called The Coming Commodities Bull Market. That's episode number 380. So anyway, there's just tons and tons of resources for you here to learn more about how to get in control of your finances. That's why we're here. That's what we do for our students and members here at Follow the Money. If you're interested in becoming a member here at Follow the Money, just simply go to followthemoney.com forward slash join. Simply choose your plan and you'll instantly get access to our very best resources when it comes to investing, trading, and learning how to earn more income in this uncertain economy.